From a gathering of just a handful of people who sat in the shade of a tree to watch the rather limited action some three decades ago, Summerhill Stud's annual Stallion Day has grown to become one of the major events on horse racing social calendar. This year's gathering achieved a standard of sophistication which could not have failed to impress the hundreds of guests who numbered among them a contingent of racing journalists from far-flung corners of the world. Sponsors Investec provided complimentary knee rugs to supplement the chairs for the guests on the terrace and host Mick Goss kicked off the proceedings with an introduction to the stud's newest honourable retiree, the gelding Pierre Jourdan, who has joined other greats like Senor Santa in the Summerhill paddocks. We're here today, ladies and gentlemen, to celebrate the racehorse and to greet the return today of a racing legend who's going to spend the rest of his days with us. Sophie Magnia, wife of Coolmore Studs, Australian head Tom Magnia, was this year's guest of honour, selected to perform the traditional Sabrage demonstration with Tarquin van Arnhem. And she proved more than equal to the task. <laughs> As is now customary, Summerhill's impressive stallion band performed a brief march past in the sponsor's livery by way of introduction before being exhibited at length. Golden Golden sword. Sword. Traffic guard. Brave to the soldier. Mother's Bay. Bay. This, this is Soul Shire, ladies and gentlemen. And gentlemen. St. Petersburg. Petersburg. Visionaire is proof that racehorses can certainly be rock star. Second, Second top rated, rated horse of his year, Admire Main. Our man, APR. The two sequences of the stallion showing were separated by the always keenly anticipated performance by the stud Zulu dance troupe demonstrated the zest and flair which have taken them to competitions around the world. The latest Kumal bred horse to join Summerhill's illustrious stallion band is Await the Dawn, a son of Giants Causeway. This exceptionally good-looking bay won three group races in Britain and Ireland, including the Group 2 Hardwick Stakes at Royal Ascot, in which he scored by three lengths. He was also a part of Mike de Cox's contingent in Dubai earlier this year and won one race in top company, apart from being a force in several feature events, including the Dubai City of Gold, in which he was narrowly beaten into second place by the well-performed Jackalberry. This, Tom Magna tells me, was the best horse in Bally Doyle that year, and my God, they had some horses. This is the most powerful racing stable in the world. The Europeans had begun to think that he might just be the best middle distance horse in the world and the world's greatest racing agency Timeform began to think the same. It's a great sadness about this game that us South Africans with our currency have got to rely on the adversity of others. The horse fell ill, desperately ill and he was never the same again. When he was on the gallops he's probably one of the most exciting horses we've had. Um, he, he had a tremendous ability um, and I remember you know Aidan speaking so so passionately about this horse and the ability that he had and he looks fantastic he's got a great pedigree and I just think that that a horse like this has got a, a big future and listen I, I you know I wish the, the Goss family in Summerhill the best of luck with this horse because I think this is a horse that there's a very exciting future and I only wish that we were standing him in Australia but you know I think that um, our loss will be a mixed game. Our other inductee for 2013 is an entirely different story not only because he comes from the other end of the aptitude spectrum. He was a little bit of a Johnny come lately. Over dinner two Sundays ago, he fell together. And he's the proof of the value of relationships. Dennis and Gail Evans, our friends John Slade and Andreas Jacobs from Main Chance Farm, and Myron Berzak, old client of Summerhill, own this horse, and he'll be joining us by name, Atto. He won nine races. He won 14 million in stakes. He was the Singapore Mile Champion. And then he shows his real class, ladies and gentlemen. He smokes a world-class field of sprinters in the Chris Flyer Sprint in Singapore. And one of his victims 
was a horse called Krypton Factor who just a month before had won the richest sprint in the world in Dubai. In this game, we never stop searching for that rare beast with size, speed, and superior genes. John Slade swears that this was as sensational a yearling as he's ever taken to a sale. The first of the resident stallions to be paraded was Golden Sword. The highest rated son of High Chaparral. Now High Chaparral, ladies and gentlemen, first stallion since his own illustrious father, Sadler's Wells, we speak of one of the greatest stallions the world's ever known, to get six Group 1 winners in his first crop. He's the sire again this year of a three-year-old Triple Crown King in Australia. It's a done deal. Here in front of you today, for the first time, you have his highest rated Northern Hemisphere son of all time, Golden Sword. And Golden Sword, ladies and gentlemen, ran the world champion of his year, See the Stars, to just two lengths in the English, well, the investing English derby, let's never forget. He ran Flame and Glory to second in the Irish derby, and he went on to Dubai to join Mike de Kock, and he ran the fastest 2,000 metres in 18 years of World Cup history, and we know what horses have won the World Cup over the years. He was supported, as I told you earlier, last season by Sheikh Mohammed, by Mary Slack, by Gaynor Rupert, by Mouton's Hook, and by a host of our local breeders. He had a royal book. And ladies and gentlemen, there hasn't been this kind of excitement about a sword since the reign of King Arthur. Traffic guard, who tips the scales at around 700 kilograms, is by the highly successful Australian sire, More Than Ready, who is already impressed in this country with the Justin Snaith trained Gimme the Green Light. Gimme the Green Light is storming home in the centre, and Gimme the Green Light gets up the beat variety club. Out of a half-sister to South African derby winner, chief advocate, traffic guard raced in England, Ireland and Dubai, where he earned his connections in excess of 4,7 million rand. His best run, apart from his five victories, was a next second to Epsom Derby winner New Approach in the Irish Champion Stakes at Leopardstown. Next in was Braveton Soldier, whose dam, blessed by Mr. Prospector, is a full sister to Kentucky Derby winner Fuzaishi Pegasus. Now, Braveton Soldier, ladies and gentlemen, comes from the sire line, which is celebrated in this country by a horse called Var by Black Manilush, by Tiger Ridge, and by McGock. He's the son of the great Stormcat, who commanded the biggest stud fee of all stallions in their time. The best judge in the world paid the world record price for him as a weanling. Three million dollars, 30 million rand at yesterday's exchange rate when he was five months old. And then he justified the best judge in the world's faith by winning a stakes race while he was still a maiden over 1,200 metres against some of the best juveniles in Ireland. The Blenheim Stakes, which Tom Magnum will tell you, is celebrated by all Irishmen. He came out as an older horse and won a group race over a mile in record time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, he's just become South Africa's leading first crop sire by average at the national yearling sales in the year of Seventh Rock and King's Apostle. That is Braveton Soldier, and his foals look just like that. The strapping Mullins Bay, son of Machiavellian, achieved a time form rating of 121 pounds and has already made his mark as a stallion in this country, with the likes of Gitiano, winner of the 1 million rand KZN Breeders 1600. Corridor and Koi Boy coming home hard, but Gitiano, Cookie Monster, Gitiano's going to win it. Koi Boy and Corridor set. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in 1711, Queen Anne inaugurated the greatest racing festival in the world on Ascot Heath, and it's now called Royal Ascot. The centerpiece of that great showpiece is the Gold Cup. And there's only one horse in history who ever won it four times in a row, and he carried the Coolmore colors, a horse called Yates. His brother was named for the finest footballer at Manchester United at a time when the Coolmore team owned a big chunk of their equity. His name was Solskjaer. And he was so highly regarded, ladies and gentlemen, that he made his debut in the Irish 2000 Guineas Group 1, first time at a race course. He went on to earn himself 120 time form. He's the son of the only stallion in history to win sires championships in the Northern and Southern Hemisphere, Dane Hill, Solskjaer, ladies and gentlemen. The handsome Nureyev horse, St. Petersburg, also made his debut at this year's stallion showing. He's a multiple group at stakes winner in Australia. St. Petersburg is already the sire of five stakes winners, including this year's Australian celebrity, Solzhenitsyn, 
who took out the time-honored two-rack handicap, Group 1. Here you have, in your midst, the sire of an Australian Group 1 winner, one of the most competitive racing circuits anywhere in the world. He's standing here right with you, and he'll cost you a paltry 5,000 Rand to visit. Best value horse, he's the property of a Singapore mogul by the name of Mark Yong, who keeps his mares and his one stallion here with us. A five-time winner of over four million US dollars in the USA, Visionaire, who was raced by Barry Irwin's Team Vela, is a powerful son of top American sire, Grand Slam. In the lead up to the 2010 Kentucky Derby, there were two names on most racing fans' lips. One was a horse called Pyro, the other one was this horse. And he earned his billing courtesy of a couple of runaway victories as he led up through his three-year-old campaign and it culminated with a spectacular win in the fog of the Gotham Stakes, which is the race that launched the careers of Secretariat and Gone West. But the race that defined him, ladies and gentlemen, was the race that defined the stallion careers of some of the best stallions in America today. In the King's Bishop Stakes, Visionaire swept from the back of the field to decimate the fastest three-year-olds of the nation. From Japan comes Admire Main, a winner of four races who earned a time form rating of 120. This son of the breed shaping Sunday Silence won his first four starts as a juvenile, including a listed, a Group 3, and a Group 2 race in that order. He earned over $2 million during his racing career, which also embraced a neck defeat in the Japanese Derby, in which he raced with a suspect tendon. That he's had 10 juvenile winners, ladies and gentlemen, from his first 14 runners, over 800 to 2,000 metres, including two in stakes class, is a hell of an achievement for this horse, and I think he's confounded us all. Admire Main's juvenile daughter, Admiral's Eye, finished a close-up third behind Along Came Polly and Four the Lads in the Grade 1 to Queenie Stakes, subsequent to the stallion showing. Time to shine, Along Came Polly, Admiral's Eye runs a cracker. And finally, the guests at Summerhill were introduced to a successful USA and UAE campaigner, AP Arrow, a multiple graded stakes winner of almost one and a half million dollars. AP Arrow was the top son of the USA's best stallion, AP Indy, in 2008. And like most of the stallion's top sons, he hails from the Mr. Prospector sire line. AP Arrow, ladies and gentlemen, was the best performed racing son of that emperor of stallions in the world in 2010. And he's also out of a Mr. Prospector mare. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he has a black type performing two-year-old already, but they tell me that his best are in some of the country's best yards and the best is still to come. As usual, the cuisine was excellent, the company convivial and the host his ever charming self. Whether it was introducing the outstanding video on the stud stallion band, announcing the awards to various long-standing friends of Summerhill like Granville Gardner, who was represented by Cheryl Goss, Owner breeder Mike Day Toombs, or the irrepressible Albert Rapp, co owner of the now deceased National Emblem. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand you over to Brendan Stewart, who's going to do the talking on behalf of Investing. When, you know, we look at our UK business, and I had the privilege of being there last month at the Derby, and you do have an Investing emblazoned around you, and it just reminds you of what we've achieved in, in the world stage. And in the UK, we're a top three money manager for private client money. We're the top private client money manager in this country. We're a top 100 asset manager in the UK and globally. We've got about 40 billion pounds of assets under management, purely from the private client side, and another 70 million institutional. So 110 billion pounds under management. And we wanted to commend that to you lot, except the racing crowd is a tough crowd because you guys think that 20 to one is a return. <laughs> But 20 to 1 is not a return, yeah? Like, Professor, am I right? 20 to 1 is not a return. It's called gambling. It's called gambling, yes. I'm reminded of that quote that said, I've worked out that the odds of your winning the lottery are the same whether you enter or whether you don't. <laughs> so in the event that you do need some money managed, whether here or globally, we are obviously in a position to chat to you and to talk to you about that. <laughs> don't put it all on the 20 to 1. 
And as the sun began to set on another wonderful stallion day at Summerhill, the last word came from Rob Burnett, co-organiser of the tour by the foreign media contingent. This stud reminds me very much of similar breeding country in both New Zealand and, and Australia. In actual fact, it has similar wonderful rolling hills and pastures and horsemen and women. They are, it, the world over, we, we're all the same and we all have the same ambitions and ideas and Summerhill and McGoss presented beautifully. <laughs>